Welcome to Natural Recovery from Suffering. This is Scott Killaby. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell my story from the unconscious. And there's a reasons for that. Dan McClintock and I, who developed this work, we knew from the beginning because we were, well, we were starting to get to repression from the beginning of developing this work. And we knew that that it would blow people away in terms of how it questions victim consciousness. And we've gotten better at that, actually. And the tools are very sharp now where we you can dissolve that victim consciousness by going to the root emotional repression. But of course, this is the stuff we don't want to feel. But there's such a story here because Dan and I knew for years that, like, we would say to each other, how are we going to bring this out? Be well, because so many people are identified in some form of victim consciousness and that we hold on to it so tightly that if we really do provide a pathway out of it, will people want that? They might say they want that, but... And then who are you going to piss off along the way? <laughs> right? But we we decided or discovered that there are ways to talk about it that really disarm people and help them see better where it's coming from. And for me, the best way is to just tell you my story from the unconscious. So I want to tell you my story, not all the details, but I'm going to tell it in, if, as if I'm telling the truth of my unconscious, not the lie that was Scott on the surface, but the, the unconscious mechanism that was running it. From a very early age, <clears throat> I'm just like you. I'm a kid, <laughs> right? We're not victims. I didn't think I was a victim. I was a kid. Just like you, I couldn't be myself. And so now that I've discovered my unconscious, when I was just a little kid in my house from ages five to six, seven, I distinctly know that the programming there was, I'm angry, but I can't. I'm pissed. I'm already pissed by the age of five or six, but I buried it in order to be Scott at the surface. In other words, Scott had to be good. And Scott was good. Scott always behaved. You know, I, I never wanted to get in trouble because that was my ego structure. If, I, if I'm good, they love me. And it totally worked. And I was totally unconscious of that. But I grew up, grew up now I know I, my whole childhood I was fucking pissed. And why? Well, <laughs> it's like this. It's just everybody has anger. But some of us can't allow it. And so we store it. And as we store it, we just walk around the earth pissed. But we bury it. We can't feel it. So that was me. And by the time I got to fourth grade, well, let me back up a little bit. Because more happened before that. I started messing around sexually, as I've told you guys, with, with boys. So there were these unconscious desires to have sex, that kind of sex. And yet, I could see from the adults that it wasn't okay. And I started to hate people. I know that now. Because I had to hate myself in order to keep that down. But I also hated people. Because they're, on some level now I know that that felt authentic for me that sex as, as an early, at an early age so I knew on some level that the shame that I felt for it was wrong I shouldn't have to feel it I actually knew this on some level as a child and you'll discover it too that you might have anger at being shamed for something that was even though even if society condemns it it's natural for you or you know even if it's anger so these things that society society condemns anger homosexuality, and then my femininity as a boy. As a little boy, I was more like a boy-girl. So by the time I'm five, six, seven, all of this stuff is internalizing, and I'm just angry. And I now know where it all came from. So I just internalized all that hatred and anger that I saw towards gay people and towards these aspects. And I just buried that, and then I despised people as a result of it. And I projected or 
Once I was bullied from ages four to six, my unconscious just was basically already, already angry. But once the bullying happened, it was this, this almost venomous uh, hatred of people then projected onto my bullies. Some of them, of course, I had sex with. So that had sex all mixed up in it. And so here I was, by the time I was in seventh grade, I walked into seventh grade, not knowing any of this. See, on the surface, <laughs> if, you walk, if you look at me on the surface in grade school, I'm, until I get bullied, I'm this kid who likes to, to express himself, to be himself. So everything seems fine on the surface. I'm still bearing anger. But once I'm bullied, all those things on the surface have to be buried, even the femininity or those aspects that were that I was exploring, buried. By the time I get into seventh grade after the bullying, there's another command in my nervous system that I did not discover until age 48. It was an unconscious command or trauma response to blend in. Just don't. Like, don't express yourself. Don't be yourself. Hold. Not only are you angry, I'm angry, but... Whatever part of you that you were bullied for, don't. And so if you can understand, that's the operating system running things at the unconscious level. But on the conscious, visible level, I'm just trying out for the basketball team and, you know, doing junior high dating. <laughs> you don't really date, but going steady with girls and being just a normal kid. So go home and look at your kids today, tonight, when they're just sitting on the bed doing their homework or coming back from basketball practice and remember that they have buried rage or hurt, terror. They just don't show it. Because I look like a normal kid most of the time. In fact, my trauma made me want to be normal after being bullied for being not normal. For being gay or feminine or artistic. I learned none of that is okay. So I've got rage going on, again, by high school because I can't be myself and I don't know this. And all this underneath this rage is creates this identity. I go through high school and you can't see any of the rage. You walk down the, the high school, uh, you see me in the hallway, I'm smiling. Yeah, I'm dating varsity cheerleaders to make sure that you can see I'm okay. I'm good. High school and junior high, they, this felt like survival. And all of my anger and hatred was just totally projected towards bullies, those bullies, all bullies, aggressive people, angry people, know-it-all, arrogant, anyone who was mean to other people or ridicule or anything like that. But you can't see any of that on the surface because I'm deeply a victim here is what I'm saying. But I'm bearing all of that, those feelings, and underneath all that rage is a fear of humiliation and hurt. A fear of it happening again. So there's a trauma response in my body in high school that I didn't know, which was get away. It had been there my whole life. It's what took me away from school for three months in sixth grade so I could stay safe from the bullies. Get away, get away, get away. Unconscious trauma response. That response got me away from my hometown to go to college. And just as in with high school, on the visible level, I tell a story about why I'm going to college and what I intend to do. You know how we are. But then at the unconscious level, I'm still just fucking pissed and terrified. And so, it doesn't go so well. Stay tuned. Well, before I even get into college, just go look at your high school age kids today doing sports or whatever kids do and even sometimes look like they're having fun being kids and of course they are but at the unconscious level it's a deep hurt and an anger that's never been touched or an anger fear that has never really been touched shame and I just that's why I tell this story that in some sense we're all victims of the, the whole human conditioning and having to conform to be something that we're not and to bury really powerful emotions. In the meantime, 
So I hope I'm painting the picture for you that I didn't know I was a victim. I didn't say it to myself. I was trying to survive high school. I was trying my best to make sure that people didn't see me as that. But deep inside, I was, of course, terrified and angry and mad as hell, obviously, for what I thought happened. Or, but I couldn't show it. See, so some victims never show it because of repression. Or not all victims wear their victimhood on their sleeve. And if, if you stay tuned, I'll show you how I define, define victimhood. And it might be an eye-opener, if you agree. But going to college, it was just, um, you know, the, again, just like the high school surface story is, oh, he's just a kid in a rock band uh, playing music in high school on the surface. And then the trauma underneath. Um, college is the same way. I tell myself at the visible level, the conscious level, I'm going to college in the town of one state over. I'm going to, I'm coming out of the closet. I'm going to be myself. Bullshit. That, that can't happen until repression <laughs> work. But what I was saying is I'm going to come out of the closet. I'm going to have this college life. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to get a career. You know the story. So when you look at your college kids, college age kids, and they're telling you about the story of what they want in life. Just remember what that's driven by. Buried hurt, anger, fear. That all that energy to to achieve or escape or do something in the world comes because we're traumatized. There's a lot of energy behind what we're doing in the world and why we're doing it. So, I, you know, even though that's the story on the surface at college, like every college kid, what really happens is that I walk into college like this, unconsciously. I'm fucking pissed. I fucking hate people. I don't trust them. I'm afraid to be humiliated. I don't even yet know, I'm not even conscious yet of, of that I feel unlovable. That's also unconscious at that point. So on the surface, I'm like, oh, I'm going to come out of the closet. I'm going to fall in love. Well, my first year, I fell in love with another swimmer who was straight. I've told this story before. And on the surface, it's like, oh, I found him. He's And he was wonderful. Still is. Great guy. But unconsciously, it was like, I'm angry and I'm unlovable and I don't want him to love me back. I can't. So on the surface, it's like, oh, he doesn't love me back. And then I could feel hurt and sadness, which was safe. But at the unconscious level, I didn't want him to love me back. I'm angry. And I have to suffer. This is real, folks. You might not think you have it. This work will show it to you. That we are bamboozling ourselves on the surface of life as to what's driving everything, and this is why we're suffering. I kept doing that. <laughs> I mean, past college, I kept doing that with men. But college itself was like that. You know, I've told the story of being in rock bands in college and getting close to being signed. And now on the surface, I'm telling myself, oh, we're going to get on this record label. We're going to get famous and we're going to play music. I'm going to tour around on the unconscious. Is, I'm fucking angry. I can't show my femininity. This band is a feminine rock band as I've said, so I can't express myself here even though I want to. I can't. So I have to fucking destroy this record deal. And I did. Unconsciously destroyed it so that I could suffer more. Go back to college. Find another rock band. <laughs> find another boy in that band. Fall in love with that guitar player. I did that four or five times. Four times in a row at least. The fifth one was like kind of a a limerence or something, but four times in a row with a guitar player in different bands, I fell in love on the surface. It's like I've found him. I'm telling you, it's like falling in love. I have found him. And I love him. And then on the unconscious, it's like I fucking hate people. I hate myself. I'm angry. I'm afraid to be hurt and humiliated. And I don't want him to love me back. 
And then guess what happens because of that unconsciousness? Because that unconsciousness chose him and them, they rejected me, just like they were supposed to. And on the surface, I told myself, they hurt me, I'm hurt. See, because I could feel hurt and sadness, those were safer for me. And that's what I would do. I would tell the stories that were safer. I'm unlovable, I'm hurt, but the truth was, I'm angry and I chose that. I just wasn't conscious enough to see it. And the I'm unlovable story was part of the bamboozle because that's like a victim identity. It's like, oh, woe is me, you know. I didn't create this. This is happening to me. And so I'm, I must be unlovable. And then therefore I just hid the buried anger from myself and then did it again. <laughs> no wonder so many songs are written about this because I think we're trying to find out what the hell is going on here. I mean, falling in love and actually sabotaging it. So I did the record label sabotage again, and I did the boy sabotage over and over. The whole time pissed and not wanting love and wanting to be unlovable, but telling myself on the surface that I'm looking for a man, and I want to fall in love and live happily ever after. Bullshit. Bullshit. I wanted to suffer at the unconscious level. So, all that music and suffering and everything led to what I had created on, my system was like, well, you're fucking, I'm pissed, so I'm just gonna create this addiction. We're gonna get, take as many pills as we can, and then you won't have to feel the anger. And damn, that worked really well. In short periods of time, I couldn't even suffer. Until that destroyed my life, and then I go into 12-step, and on the surface, I'm telling myself, like so many of us do, oh, God, I see people going into treatment right now. <laughs> people that I know, and they're telling the same story, and I don't want to ruin it for them because they haven't gotten to the trauma. But the story was, I'm going to get clean, and I'm going to turn my life around. And so I got involved in 12-step, and I became the poster child for... Narcotics Anonymous. I did everything they told me to do and more. And you know why? Because at the unconscious level, I'm like, I fucking hate them. But I want their approval. Because that makes me feel better about myself. So I'm just going to go become addicted to approval. And I did, and it worked. And I didn't have to feel the buried anger and fear. And, well, suffice it to say, that didn't work. The, the 12 step thing, <laughs> right? Because I get, didn't get to the root. So, I mean, I'm, I'm angry through the whole, my whole life and not dealing with it and not dealing with it there either. So, where do I go now? Well, where do I go to be, essentially be a victim and hide from my own anger? And by the way, not all victims are carrying buried anger. Some carry a lot of buried hurt. And therefore, they can be angrier on the surface. And sometimes people think of them as cl more classic victims who are yelling and screaming at the perpetrators. And th that wasn't me. Mine was covert stealth. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, well, because I was an anger repressor, I can't, I can't make a ruckus in my victimhood. I have to get them back in a unconscious way to get back at all the people that hate me that hurt me see that's the unconsciousness being in a rock band is like a, trying to make it famous in a rock band is like a big finger to the people that hurt you when you were a kid if you've ever read stories of Kurt Cobain and other people why they became famous because they were motivated by the hurt of their childhood well that was me my big finger to everyone was trying to make it in a band. But then that led to addiction and suffering and then this, the 12 step. So now that didn't work, the 12 step, and I'm out looking for everything I can find that will give me the answer. And right there looking outside myself is the problem, but I don't know it. Because the truth is, as I was looking for answers, it was like I'm fucking angry and I don't even know this. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking 
and I pick up non-dual books and they say the answer is already here. You are the awakeness already. And I'm like, boom. That's it. That is it. And I have to say, as much as criticism as I give to the non-dual teachings because of the bypass, much gratitude. Because when I found that, it did resonate for the first time that, well, <laughs> that the answer's already here. But then, of course, the non-dual thing has nothing to do with the buried stuff. So I got to be involved in the seeking towards the enlightenment. And, and that's what was happening on the visible level. Like, I'm seeking enlightenment now. That's all that I want. I'm a one-track mind on the conscious level. On the unconscious levels, I'm fucking angry, and I will not, I will not feel and express this. And this is creating my suffering, of course. This buried anger. You know, just like science says, it creates anger or suffering, but I didn't know any of that. I'm just seeking enlightenment. I don't care about science at this point. You don't care about anything when you're seeking enlightenment, really, except for enlightenment or awakening. And that was helpful to blind me to the anger. So I kept seeking, and then I had the shift. And in that moment, now that I've had this embodiment, I can look back, in that moment, it was true. The, the non-separation, just total, you can't express it, non-separation. But in that, it was like, I'm fucking pissed. There was some conditioning and chronic pain that was just fucking angry. Like, I'm not going to be a part of this non-dual thing. We're not doing that. I'm not coming into the light here. I'm fucking angry and afraid. And I'm not letting go of that. And so then I become a teacher. In part because I can slide right into that role and start pointing to awareness unbeknownst to me and stay safe from the buried anger. So here I am on the surface, pointing and writing and everything, and it all looks I'm doing pretty good. I'm showing up good, you know, peaceful, helping people, clear. There's awareness there. And the whole time, it's like I'm fucking pissed, still angry and terrified of it. And it's only chronic pain as I'm resting here as awareness. So I can just lie to fuck to you guys and to myself for years and say that has nothing to do with anything. Just like we teachers do. Oh, that bad back of mine has nothing to do with this. That's just a sensation and awareness. Don't look at that. Don't ask any more questions. And that disease that I have has nothing to do with this either. <laughs> and I had like several diseases after the awakening, the shift. So I had a lot of reason to bamboozle people around the anger repression that created those diseases. But you don't know this when you're teaching. <sighs> I don't know it. I don't know that I'm having two lives here. It's like the real non-duality is within us, or the, the real duality, the split between the unconsciousness and then how we present ourselves. And how we present ourselves is not just a story. There's an, a complete bundle of separation, energetic and physical separation, that's tied to emotional repression and trauma. It's why we feel the sense of separation, because we're holding back so much energy, fear, Anger, hurt, of course we feel separate. We're trying to protect ourselves and survive. Of course we feel that way. I just didn't understand that that was repression. Until, well, I don't even want to get to that yet. Because I did plenty of stuff while I was a teacher. You know, like even a few years after with all the byproducts and the honeymoon, it's like love is everywhere, love is everything. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's no, it's all oneness, y'all. Everything is oneness. Everything is wonderful. No, there's no suffering. And you're not real and I'm not real and nothing's real. And isn't this great? On the surface. But underneath that, it's like, I'm fucking angry at you all. I don't even know you, but it's indiscriminate rage buried. So my system decides to produce a BDSM addiction because as shameful as that is, if y'all found out, it's better than the rage my system must have told myself <laughs> because I came out and told you all about the BDSM addiction, but we weren't going to talk about the rage. Remember? Because at the unconscious level, part of it is, no, I have to be angry here. You're not going to 
see that. I just didn't know all this. Then my system produced cancer. It's like, well, that's safer than anger. Let's go with that. And when when the stuff came up, I didn't understand. This is such an important piece of this. Is like go back to college. And when I was falling in love with these guys and getting hurt, guess what came to the surface safe enough to feel and express? Well, not always express, but hurt and sadness and woundedness. Yeah, I was all over it in college. I wallowed in it. <laughs> I was repressing anger, see? So hurt, that's okay. I identified with it. I almost wore it on my sleeve, but I wouldn't share it, you know, with those guys fully. I mean, I would some, actually, because I could get their love, I thought, that way. You know, don't you love me? Look how much I'm hurt. Just use it to manipulate. I didn't know that. I thought that was real vulnerability. You can't do real vulnerability when the vulnerability is being used to protect buried anger. It's just self-protective, but I didn't know it. So I, I was just making the point that I can feel hurt and woundedness, but not anger. And if you don't believe me that my system created cancer to stay safe from buried anger, listen to this. When I got the diagnosis, I didn't feel any anger. I never dealt with any anger, but guess what came up? the safer stuff, like fear even, because it wasn't fear of anger, it was fear of death. That's safer than feeling and expressing real anger to my system. And then a hurt and a sadness about it a little bit, but within a few days, I just rest and let it all come through because it's all safe anyway compared to the anger. And then I'm at peace, proving that I am enlightened. <laughs> and people said that too they were like you, you were diagnosed three days ago and I noticed that you just did a talk and you didn't even bring it up and you don't seem bothered by it um, I, I know isn't that great I'm enlightened <laughs> no the, the cancer came from the buried anger I bamboozled myself and didn't feel any anger when the cancer diagnosis came I just rested with what was safe like I always did and then I looked peaceful and everything's okay I bamboozled you and me but thank you Okay, stay tuned. There's a bit more. So there I am as a teacher, and, and I know I've told this story before. I've told it several times in a way, kind of from the unconscious, so that we can, we're turning everything inside out here. Because a lot of teachers, you know, what we do is we tell our awakening story, and oh my God, it's like a shiny freaking nickel. You know, it's like, wow, really? That happened to you? And then that, and you saw that, and then you've never suffered since? Amazing. <laughs> and then we teachers get sick or chronic pain or depressed or suicidal addiction. That doesn't go in the story. Usually the awakening story. So as you guys know, I've come and told my story over this year a couple of times to tell the truth of it. And this is just, even though I'm doing the same thing, I think while this will help people, hopefully is to see where victim consciousness comes from and to provide a pathway to dissolve that without bypassing and getting to the buried emotions that produce that identity. Because I've already given you the identity. It just, see, with victim consciousness, it's not like we grow up thinking, I'm a victim. We might be conscious of it, but it's more as how we're operating in the world. I can't emphasize enough that me being an attorney, again, on the surface looks like I'm being good, I'm fighting the good fight, I'm taking on big corporations who discriminate against African-American men and women. And I, you can't get too much better than that. I'm pretty good, aren't I? See that? That's a kind of a narcissism in a way. Coming from what? Very fucking anger. I am pissed and I want to take people down is what it is. I want to take them down because I'm a victim. I'm going to get them back. But on the surface, I'm just a hometown attorney, you know, making it big at the firm in the other town and
when I opened treatment centers after becoming a teacher, as I've said before, I fought the fraud in the addiction treatment field. I wanted to get rid of the treatment centers who were paying people to relapse. Because it's, well, it's awful, actually. But it, on the surface, that's what I'm doing. But And then people probably looked at that like, yeah, he's really good. No, you don't understand. I have to be good. I buried anger. I'm fucking pissed. And I'm trying to get back at people. But I didn't know that. Because this motivation to do this stuff in the world doesn't come from nowhere. It's just like when non-dual teachers say, well, or they in, implicate in some way that this ego can just come out of awareness and then go back in. No, it's directly connected to the repression of emotion. We're, we're producing identity to stay safe from what we buried. It's simply safer to believe I'm unlovable or I'm a victim or some version of that there's something wrong with me or I'm fucked than it is to feel and express what we buried. So we just suffer. And this is just my story. I hope it ends in helping you see how to unravel the victim consciousness using our work. But, you know, I've been saying to people, if you don't see that you're creating it, the suffering, you'll always have some element of victim consciousness. Yeah, it's a seeing that you have to see to see through it. And it involves the buried stuff. But so many of us would love to get rid of that victim consciousness without getting to the buried stuff and even try to forgive other people when we're raging inside. I tried that. And as a teacher, I brought forgiveness and other inquiries to people never getting to the buried rage. So a bunch of anger and sadness and hurt repressors forgiving, being forgiving of what arises or forgiving of the past when in fact we didn't even get to the past because this past suffering is created by the buried stuff. You can't forgive when you're raging inside and you hate the people that hurt you but you're not acknowledging it or you're hurt deeply and it's not being made conscious. We can't forgive on top of that. It just doesn't work. And that's how I remained a victim. All from feeling like I grew up and I can't, I can't be myself. And I blame the world. And I'm going to get back at you all. My buried anger. So, you know, of course, I've, I've told the story as I'm teaching. I'm, my first marriage is going on. I don't want to go into all that because I've explained it. But there again, surface only because if he triggered me, I'm unlovable, hurt, wounded. Those were the things I could feel. And they tell us in Eastern practice to just rest and let that be. But what's happening there is when I was rest and letting that, resting and letting that be, I was just allowing what was already safe. Because it was the buried anger that produced that identity of I'm unlovable in those moments. I know that now. I never got to the buried anger. So here I am talking to my first husband, right? We're arguing about, hey, Scott, you didn't take out the trash in the way that I told you, or you didn't clean this a certain way. And then I'm hurt. I don't mind sharing that. That hurts that you are just, I'm a little upset, but not angry. I might have a conversation with you or we'll talk about it. Let's let's be open. Let's be vulnerable. Let's it's all bullshit cuz I'm at the unconscious level I'm fucking angry at you, but I can't express it. And then using spirituality to rest and let the safe stuff be at the surface, the hurt, the woundedness, and then the contraction that contains the buried anger. Just rest and let that be, but that contains the buried anger, and that never, I got, never got to that in that whole marriage. Because I wasn't willing to feel and express anger. I felt I couldn't. I did get angry from time to time, but that's only because I had held it in for a while and then it came out like that okay so 
then I get, you know, it produces the sex addiction during the teaching. It produces the uh, spinal stenosis. It's like my si system is saying, I'm angry, and I'm afraid of the anger, and I'm going to get spinal stenosis and intense nerve pain. That's better and safer than anger. And the pain's going to be so bad, we're going to produce suicidal ideation for you. You can kill yourself. That's an option before going to feeling and expressing anger. Emotional repression creates a premature death rate, actually, science is telling us now. And I, I lived it. I was, I was ready to die before feeling and expressing anger to people, which would have been terrifying. Dying would have been less terrifying to my system. It, I, that's what my system told me. But I wasn't aware of that, you know? I just, it was, I know from doing inquiry and going back and looking what was driving all that. I know it through inquiry. I don't, I didn't know it at the time. So anyway, I get through that. I don't kill myself. And now I'm starting to discover, oh shit, this is buried anger. <laughs> all right. I've told that whole thing. But I begin the process of making that buried anger conscious. And then the pain goes away and all's well. And so much of the suffering that I didn't even know was here left. <laughs> like, just me not speaking up and being myself and, and really enjoying life fully. And so much has changed. But I can't, here's the thing, I can't, from a certain point forward, I can't talk about myself as two parts. Because once I brought the unconsciousness into awareness, the buried anger and the femininity into awareness, the energy of the fear of that, I mean, then I can't tell you that there's something going on in the unconscious that's different than in the visible realm. Because if I'm angry, you'll know it. And it's not buried. I don't have to bury it. So it's just a different life. And you might look back at your life and say, well, I, can't, I don't see two lives either. Well, all you have to see is suffering. And then you know that there's an unconscious buried there's repression there that because repression creates a suffering. You wouldn't see the repression going back until you do this work to make that conscious. See, I've made this repression conscious so I can look back at my life and see, oh, the inside of where that came from. And you'll see that here too. And you might be able to tell your story like that. Okay, because it's a great way, I think, to talk about dissolving victim consciousness which will be the uh, subject of my last segment. See, me being the attorney, fighting the good fight, that's still the victim. Me arguing with my first husband about whether the dishes should go this way or that way and just showing hurt and not anger, that's me being the victim. It might not look like a victim. I never may have said the words, but that's exactly what that was because I wasn't empowered to be myself because I was victimized as a kid, like many of you. So it's like I had to be a victim. I had to see myself as unlovable were the words I put to it. Yours might be not good enough, or but that's still victimhood because it's, it's not what you are. And it's this sense that, that you're, uh, you're deficient. There's something wrong with you. Something is missing. And something is missing. The emotions that you buried. That's why, that's why it feels like something is lacking or deficient. That's why we land on identities like, I'm a victim. It's because we've buried these emotions. And therefore, this repression, just as science says, produces suffering. Produces, in this case, identity. So for this work to truly work, you go beyond just recognizing that, oh, I have buried anger in the beginning. And even beyond seeing this buried anger is connected to producing my suffering, you bring inquiry to that for the transformation, which is very somatic, actually. And and energetic, and realization is energetic. I mean, true transformation is energetic. It's not a mind thing, or a belief, or a new story. But as you go through that process, not only do you discover as an angry repressor that you're angry, that you've always been angry, but at some point, see, because even that is victim 
frankly, because it's like you're angry because something happened to you. Yeah. But what you discover is you have trauma, which means that you have to be angry. And this is something that you can't know when you start this path or before because it's really buried. And it's a trauma response where we hold on to the emotion that we buried as kids. It's protecting us to hold on to it. So by burying anger, I showed up as good and that protected me or peaceful teacher, attorney. It's all to protect me from the buried stuff. And I got love that way. And that's why we bury stuff to stay safe, get love, survive. But triggers come from repression and identities and shadows come from repression like victim because that's how we stay safe. We, our systems keep us safe by producing identities, anything other than the buried emotions. That's what's not safe to the system. So it's the buried emotions that are responsible for the victim identity. It's not really what happened to us. Because had we had good processing or trauma work when we were kids, we wouldn't be holding on to what happened to us. We're holding on to the buried emotions because we have to. We haven't been able to process them yet you know, until we can. But when we do here, we finally realize that, for example, we're not just victims. We're not just angry because of what happened. We've been generating the anger and holding on to it. I have to be angry and I have to be afraid still of expressing that anger so I can hold on to it and then suffer. Why? To stay safe and get love. As much as we hate the victim identity, we get something out of it. Or that I'm unlovable or not good enough. We stay safe from the buried emotions and we get love and Mainly we stay safe, though, because we don't have to feel that fear of feeling and expressing those emotions. As we make that conscious in this work, we, that, become, that becomes part of inquiry, the direct seeing and inquiry practice of I have to be angry, for example, and making that more and more conscious so that you don't walk around earth thinking that things are happening to you. People are just doing things to you and then you're suffering. And that's what you think until you make conscious, oh, I have to be angry here. <laughs> I, ha I just didn't know that. I've been doing it all my life. I've, I've shared that on YouTube. Once you make that conscious, then it's a game changer. Or if you're a sadness repressor and you make that conscious that you are generating that suffering from the buried sadness, you have to be sad and afraid to show the sadness. So you identify with, uh, I was neglected or I'm unlovable or I identities, things that happen, all connected to some sadness that's totally buried. It just don't, you doesn't even feel like sadness now. It's just your body. There really is a way out of victim consciousness now. I can say that for sure because we're getting to the root. But very few people are going to, well, nobody wants to do this. And s many people will struggle with this because to go to this depth of freedom, you would have to make conscious the buried emotions that are creating all that suffering. And that's what we resist the most. But what I say is if you're not going to go to the buried emotions, why should you, why should you expect the victim consciousness or the deficiency stories to go away completely or the suffering for that matter to go away if you don't get to the root of it? It's almost like we take what we, <laughs> right? We get what we ask for. But if you're ready, I hope that telling this story this way was disarming in terms of inviting you to see that maybe you're, you have victim consciousness. In other words, are you suffering? Because what we found is like when people go deep in this work, their mind will take them anywhere but to the buried stuff. The mind will say, I'm unlovable. I'm powerless. I can't do this. I can't heal. My pain is physical. It's not emotional. This will never work for me. I can't do it on my own. 
any of those victim-like identities, which are some version of, I'm fucked and there's nothing I can do. Life has fucked me and there's nothing I can do. <laughs> right? Well, under that is the buried emotions that make that feel true. And go to the buried emotions. And it, that, you won't have those thoughts that make it seem like life is fucking you. You're a victim of life. Life is fucking you, I mean. <laughs> Sorry for my language, but if you feel your body, it feels that way. I'm fucked. If you're skillful enough, you'll feel that, and that's the doorway into the deepest resistance in the body. You need skill, though. Okay, I think that's it. I feel good about the podcast. Let me just think about it for a moment and see if there's anything else I want to share. Hopefully you got the picture that on the surface I was one thing, and the unconscious was running the whole thing until the unconscious and was brought into awareness. And then now you have to put up with me like this, which I don't know. <laughs> what will you say? Well, how do we know you're not unconscious right now? Well, if I were, I wouldn't be able to tell you all this, probably. That's why people don't tell you this, <laughs> because they can't. I don't know. I don't have anything to prove. And there's enough people who say they're done, so I'm not going to answer the question. Just watch how I live. Don't expect me to be a saint because that's what anger repressors want to see. And that's exactly how anger repressors don't get free by expecting themselves to be nice and perfect and always something that isn't real. But I can just tell you this. It's as simple as, as I said. When you bring this unconscious buried emotion into awareness and it's now part of what you feel and express, there's nothing in the unconscious that has to run what's happening in your life. You're just living authentically. You could say it's embodied presence because you've brought awareness down into the body. And what was previously unconscious and running things, repression isn't anymore because that repression has been transmuted to presence. Thank you for listening.